it's uh, one acquisition after the other going into the African continent. Obviously, it's a, there's a big strategy uh, to increase your footprint in Africa. What do you plan to achieve with this most recent acquisition? Mm. Well, good afternoon, firstly. Um, as we've said originally, we have a very clear strategy for, <coughs> I beg your pardon, rolling out onto the balance of the continent. This particular opportunity puts us in 28 markets where these products are sold. And if clearly, if you combine those together with some of our other export activities, we begin to get the kind of market presence and marketing opportunities um, that allow us to grow gradually on the continent with our, with our business partners and obviously uh, driving it from Tiger. Mm. Well, I mean, we're talking about 28 uh, countries across the continent, as you mentioned. It's a South African manufacturer and exporter of powdered seasonings and beverage products. Looking at these products, tell us exactly what market you're catering for, because at first glance, one would uh, think that you are catering for the lower LSA market. Well, absolutely correct. Again, we're dealing with markets where we call it the sort of the bottom and the middle sector of the of the pyramid where consumers uh, everyday housewives and, and and guys buy various products to either enhance their cooking experience or quench thirst so mm -hmm. these markets travel well they do well in those particular markets uh, whether it's nigeria mozambique tanzania angola etc so it works for the kind of branded and i must state this branded product that we continue to want to build on the African continent. Uh, if this acquisition does go through, you're talking about it being settled in cash, does that come from cash from borrowings or cash from reserves on your yeah. balance sheet? So again, you know, as you know, Tiger's fairly cash flush at the moment, but certainly we will be paying for this with cash. There may be some borrowings involved, but uh, it's nothing that would put any strain on our balance sheet at all. As you know, we are ungeared at the moment. Well, well taking a look at the <coughs> trading update as well, you are talking about margins being under pressure going forward. Looking at the margins, the historical margins for the company that you looking to acquire uh, what are, are we looking at it at this point well, we haven't disclosed that in there but those margins certainly in this instance are more than just double digit margins which is what we prefer our margins to be by and large you know we aim for a blended operating margin of about 15 percent generally when buying into companies or buying companies on the continent they tend to sit in single digit this one sits in double digit so we're very pleased with that um, the operations are based in Johannesburg uh, they do work with a number of distributors across the continent it's precisely the kind of model that helps us deepen that penetration as I said so we, we really think it's a very good deal well you're talking about deepening penetration as well and of course just looking at uh, the export model that Devita perhaps will offer Tiger Brands do you plan to export more products from a Tiger Brands as uh, divisions? Okay, so we have something called Tiger International, which already uh, uh, exports product into the balance of the continent. So the opportunity to cross-pollinate what's happening between these two businesses, while not in any way diminishing the great entrepreneurial stuff that you find in Davita, I think we could learn one or two things about that, quite frankly. And then driving that product, we see great synergies, as we would put them, on a marketing level, at a distributor level. Um, and yes, there's stuff that we can begin to produce with our existing brands through Davita that would give us further market penetration in South Africa itself. Looking at South African operations, again, I allude to your trading updates, and uh, we have been seeing m mixed messages coming through from various retailers and companies like <coughs> such as yourselves as well. You're talking about unemployment and the shrinking of the labor market still being uh, quite a big challenge. You are expanding further into Africa. Tell us about the play between South African operations and the rest of the continent going okay. forward. So, so very clearly South Africa is the core and we've always said that we've always got to focus on the core and make sure we get the core right the South African consumer remains under pressure that's what we clearly say in our trading uh, update and we know that that pressure is going to ease over time what we've also said is when we look at acquisitive opportunities in South Africa, they're fairly limited. And we've very definitely seen those acquisitive opportunities outside South Africa, primarily on the African continent, hence Ethiopia, hence Nigeria, hence um, Cameroon, hence Kenya. And we will continue looking for those. So that's the interplay between the two. But remember, the balance of the continent will be relatively small still relative to what we do back home. When you say you'll keep looking for acquisitions, does that mean we can expect another uh, announcement soon from no, Tiger no, Brands? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying we will continue to look yeah. for the right acquisitions Fantastic. on the continent.